Yellowstone supervolcano has been rattled by an Idaho magnitude 4.4 earthquake that shook, to, uh, shook the area today. It has also seen an earthquake swarm in that area. We're going to see the map together. Let's remember that we had an out of the blue 6.5 magnitude earthquake the night of March 31st to April 1st, right in that area, just uh, northeast of Boise, Idaho. And uh, that, of course, rattled the whole of the Yellowstone area because it was close enough. It was uh, about 190 miles west of Yellowstone. Let's remember how the magma goes into that area. This is it. It goes in through Baja, California. The western part goes through the uh, San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault System high threat volcanoes of the Californian area. And then the, this part here, the eastern part goes through Salt Lake City, Utah, which had March 18, 5.7 out of the blue earthquake, or earthquake and then goes into uh, Supply Yellowstone. And then it turns west, as you can see in the left hand side. And that, that's a superficial. Uh, uh, magma close to the surface. That's where Idaho is. And that's where the magma is that, uh, of course, has given us those earthquakes. And that's an area, as we're going to see on the map, of uh, lava fields. And here we are on the west coast. And this is what we saw before. This is Baja California. And this is the area of the western uh, part of the plume that would feed San Andreas Fault and the Walker Lane Fault System with the high threat volcanoes here. And also the part of that tangent that we saw going through Salt Lake City into Wyoming and then making that um, west uh, turn into the area of Idaho between the uh, west coast and Wyoming. So this imaginary seven is uh, the mantle plume, the magma that we have under that area coming from Baja, California. It's like a Y shape. The western part goes into these areas and the eastern part goes and feeds Salt Lake City. We know Salt Lake City has about nine volcanoes south of Salt Lake City, Utah, and it feeds the uh, supervolcano of Yellowstone. And then we have Idaho, which is, of course, another area of another eight volcanoes. Now, this is a Snake River Plain that has, we know that has had uh, the ancient track of the um, eruptions that have led to the eruption of Yellowstone 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 640,000 years ago, this area where we have today. Now, this is our quake swarm that we have, as you can see here. Let's pull in a little bit. This is what we're talking about. The blue is the past day. So this is what we're talking about. This is between uh, just north of Boise, Idaho, about, uh, what, 100, 200 miles, 20, 40, 60, about 100 miles. And this is the 4.4 that we're talking about, and that's what rattled um, Yellowstone. We do have other ones that are about 3, 3.2, and um, 3.9, but we're talking about the 4.4. It was shallow, about 6 miles down, and... Uh, this is the shake map of it. This is a shake map intensity. Now, the USGS stops at this block, but this is Yellowstone Lake. You see that thing there? That sort of a horseshoe-shaped thing? This here is Yellowstone Lake. This inverted Z, this Z is Hebgen Lake. That's what had the 7.5 magnitude earthquake on August 17, 1959. And this is obviously, if you extend the intensity lines of that 4.4 magnitude shallow earthquake that was uh, just north of Boise, obviously it would have shaken uh, Yellowstone. Definitely would have taken, shaken Yellowstone, and that area there is just about 100 miles from that shake up to here, another 100 miles in. If you extrapolate those lines, that's why I'm saying Yellowstone must have felt it. Now, we know that from what USGS has told us, uh, let's see how many people, okay, that's the other, that's having to do with uh, the MENA earthquake that uh, I don't think shook uh, 
Long Valley Mono Lake. That's Long Valley Super Volcano, the caldera of California. That's Mono Lake. It may shake in the greater area. This is an area of Long Valley caldera. But anyway, that's another issue. This is what we're talking about here. Okay. Now, if we pull out, this is the area that we're talking about, all these fault lines. The Baja California magma plume that we saw is uh, the western part extends this way under San Andreas and also under the Walker Lane Fault System. Many faults here. The high threat volcanoes of California are all sitting on there. And the magma, the mantle plume and the magma going in this way uh, south of uh, uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. That's, of course, Yellowstone and turning west into Idaho. Okay, so this is our shake map. That's why I said it must have shaken Yellowstone as well, which is just about 100 miles at 50. Yeah, 50 miles out. Well, about 70 miles out of uh, the uh, outline that we have here, the block that USGS stops. But if you extrapolate the, in the intensity lines, the shake lines, you could say it did, uh, it did take in Yellowstone. This is Salt Lake City, uh, which, which is very um, in an area of a lot of liquefaction because Salt Lake is also was also part of uh, the lake systems that were down here. That's all sort of landfill, but uh, there's a lot of water under there. So it could be that uh, this part has shaken as well. So how many people reported it? There's not many people out there. 94 reported it. Okay, so all of you there, please be very careful. And uh, we have been told by USGS that they don't expect anything having to do with uh, the Idaho earthquakes causing eruption of Yellowstone. They do believe that it could, if anything, change the hydrothermal systems, that is, the geysers may have changes in their uh, geyser eruptions. Okay. So all of you there, please be very careful of what could be going on there with Idaho earthquakes. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.